It's Doodle Bud back again. Today we're going to be doing a little fountain pen troubleshooting 101. Inevitably, you're going to get a pen, whether it's brand new or one you've had for a while, and it's not going to work quite right. So I wrote down, took some notes. We got, look at that, 13 of them to go through. That's ridiculous. So let's just get straight into this and get started right now. Might sound a little too ridiculous and obvious, but, you know, is there ink in the pen? This is the IT department equivalent. When they get a call and the first thing they ask is, is it plugged in? Is it turned on? And the reason they ask that is sometimes it's not plugged in and it's not turned on. And the, that's the end of that uh, tech call. So, you know, some pens you can check from the outside. Other ones, obviously, you got to go and look. You start writing them with the pen. It was writing the other day and all of a sudden it stops. Well, yeah, you might, you know, it might be out of ink. Maybe the cartridge wasn't uh, or converter wasn't pushed down all the way. I find with a brand new pen, sometimes a little fitment that the, uh, the cartridge or converter goes over top hasn't been worked in yet. It's a little bit tighter. So sometimes you got to push a little bit harder, right? So, so check that on your, your cartridge converter pens. Uh, also with the vac fillers, most pens you can kind of see it, uh, but with vac fillers, you see the ink, there's ink in there. Why isn't it right? And well, with this one, when you to press the plunger down it fills up that's great but at the end there's usually a little seal and that seals off the main reservoir from the lower little reservoir there in the section so you can write and write the ink that's in here will drain away it'll stop so it has tons of ink you're like this thing's got ink it's not writing you got to crack that open you can leave it open as you write or you know crack it open let it fill up and then shut it again if that bothers you so check to make sure there's some ink in your pen Next thing to check is sometimes you have pens that don't seal up very well. I chatted about this on a recent video, but yeah, you go to use the pen, the cap is there to protect the nib, all that good stuff, but it's also meant to keep the nib sealed up so the ink doesn't evaporate and dry. Some pens aren't that great at that, and it can only take them a couple days for them to dry up, and it can be a chronic issue, so there's nothing wrong with any other part of the nib or ink or anything like that. It's just it's prone to drying up. Some inks can cause that problem too. So I reviewed viewed this uh, little bottle of blue ink I think it's by made by Jin Hao the other day and I really love the color and before we re reviewed it I put it in a few pens used it for like a week non-stop here are the three pens I put it in it wrote wonderfully then I kind of set the pens aside for a couple weeks came back now this little elite doesn't have a perfect seal but it's not too bad but these ones seal up no problem and I've noticed the ink is off a little bit it's been causing a little bit of trouble once it gets going it gets going but, uh, you know, this Pelican, I can leave it inked up and not use it for a very long time. It writes right away. It was kind of skipping a little bit. So some inks that are very unsuspecting, seem sort of normal, can do it. Then there's some other inks that are, you're just, you know, you can't leave them in a pen too long. They're going to potentially clog things up. So here we have this uh, red luster. It's a shimmery ink. So there's all these little particles in here. It's essentially glitter, but in a much, much finer. It uh, gets into there. And okay, it gets into suspension and it's part of it, but then you let it set for a while and settle, it's going to come out of suspension and it'll clog up that feed. Another type of ink that is prone to doing that are your crazy sheeny inks. Now they're very beautiful and all this kind of stuff, but they sort of tend to dry up a little bit quicker, I find. And when they dry, just from the nature of the beast, they're super saturated. They leave a lot of that behind in the nibs and uh, it, it can be tough to get them going. And when they dry out, they can really clog up a pen. So you might want to consider just trying a different ink in the pen. Some inks are a little more dry and just don't flow as well in certain pens. Some inks and pen combinations can just really mess things up. So if you're having that trouble, just, you know, first flush it out get a new ink in there, see if that helps. The next thing to do is sort of, again, going back to that computer analogy, the IT equivalent would be try restarting the computer. So in this case, it would be just flush out the pen, clean out the pen. So if you got ink in it, get all the ink out of the converter, the piston, whatever you got going on. Maybe if you can pull out the nib and feed or at least get a bulb syringe, spray it out. If you got a little pen wash, if you're using ultrasonic cleaner, whatever level you go to, but just give the pen a very, very thorough cleaning and flush it out. There can be little bits of uh, goo in here, dried up ink. Sometimes you can have paper fibers, some type of whatever got stuck in there. Um, it's worth just to clean the pen out and try it. Also with a brand new pen. So I just got this one, gonna be reviewing it. This thing is gorgeous. So excited to ink it up, but really what you should do first is take it out and at least take out the uh, converter, all that stuff and flush it out. There can be little bits of residue or grease left over from the manufacturing or assembly process. And that can uh, give you a hard challenge right out of the gate when you just needed to give it a quick wash. 
So, so far we haven't done anything crazy. It's like if you go out to the car and try to start it and it doesn't start, you don't just start ripping the engine apart and taking things off. No, you check air, fuel, spark, that kind of stuff first. Keep it basic before we start trying to rip off the cylinder heads, right? But we've done all that stuff. Let's say the pen is skipping. It's hard starting. It's scratchy. There's something like that going on. All signs are pointing there's something going on with the nib, the feed, or the nib and feed combination. So this is where we'll give it a look. We haven't really done anything to the pen yet. We just tried it out, right? Restarted it, made sure it's turned on kind of thing. So one thing you can check for is alignment. So there's a little slit there on the nib and then also on the feed, right? So that's out of alignment a little bit. Sometimes you might just have to go, okay, let's just give this a little adjustment. Let's just give this a little look. We're getting close. Let's check it out and make sure. Whoa, oh, oh, what happened to this thing? I just washed this pan the other day. Oh my God. Oh, that's hooped. How the hell did that happen? Well, that's kind of distracting, but um, anyway, oh man, that's going to be a repair video. Well, good, good for you guys. You'll get to watch me try to repair that sucker. Oh my God. Any, okay. So we got the nib, the, uh, the, the, the slit, the slit and the, uh, line there and the feed lined up. Okay. So that can be a problem. If those aren't lined up, you can have challenges. If your nib is like this, you're probably going to have some challenges. <laughs> Good God. Uh, one problem you can have, it could be the opposite of this thing being bent down. They can be lifted. Oh, I can't even do it with this right now. I can't even focus. <laughs> there we go. It can lift off, right? So you will have a gap like that. Like, I got to bend this anyway, so whatever. Um, it can be lifted off like that, and that's going to be a challenge with flow. So maybe something happened to your nib, probably the opposite of what happened to this nib, and it's not making contact. The, the, the nib and the feed need to be making contact, so the capillary action or capillary action, that sounds a little more proper, um, that can keep going, and, and it can draw the ink you know, out of the ink reservoir, down into the feed and the nib and all that and flow out to the tip. Now, if you have an ebonite feed, here's one thing you can do. So here we have a Noodler's Ahab, pretty uh, common pen when you're getting into fountain pens. You, you may be the cheapest introduction into flex and stuff like that. This has an ebonite feed. I have absolutely uh, massacred mine. This is not stock. You can see me chew this thing up in a separate video. But again, these, these need to be in tight sort of contact to promote that uh, capillary action and, and uh, have proper ink flow. So with Ebonite, it's vulcanized rubber. And uh, what you can do with this, you don't do this with, uh, with an ABS plastic feed, but with these Ebonite feeds you do, you put them into hot water and then you'll put the, the nib and feet together and press down on them. And the, the feed here will conform a little bit. It's got a little bit of give to it when you get it warm. Think of it like a mouth guard. If you're into fighting, martial arts, boxing, or even hockey, you get your mouth guard and you put it in hot water and then you put it in your mouth to, to set the shape so it's molded particularly to your teeth. You want to sort of do that with these as well. Now, if it, if it works fine, you don't have to do that. But that is one thing that will help promote uh, just a little bit better ink flow. If that's one of the challenges you're having, try heat setting your feed. So one thing I should mention is also if you have these problems, like if you made sure there's ink and all that stuff, if, especially if this is a new pen, before you go tinkering, call or email, contact whoever you bought the pen from. If you get a brand new pen and there's something wrong with it, the manufacturer or the online retailer or in store, that's kind of the best way to buy a pen because you can try it out. And if there's a little issue somewhere with it, you spot it, you can find it. They can swap out the nib or whatever it is you need to make this thing run properly. But uh, if you don't have the luxury of doing that, you, you, I've never had a problem with online retailers making things right. I remember I, I got uh, a pen once uh, years ago from Pen Chalet. The, the nib and feet just weren't run. I tried all my stuff. They sent me a replacement. It worked instantly. They took care of me. It was no big deal. And then the pen worked fine after that. So that's usually, a, that's the first thing you should be doing before you're messing around and bending things like I just, oh God, um, get a hold of the seller and they, uh, they will most likely make things right. So we might as well use this pen as an example since I'm going to have to repair it anyways. Oh man. So I looked at this off camera and I found out what the problem is. And it's actually one of the ones I need to mention. So make sure that the nib and feed are properly seated all the way in. So I took this pen apart, 
cleaned it all of that and I put the nib and feed back in but they needed to go just a uh, touch further like just uh, like another millimeter or something like that and what happened with this pen is I put the cap back on and it got closer and closer and closer and got to the top and hit and as I turned it over it turned the nib over and bent it so uh, <laughs> oh yeah for you know so you don't want to bend it but also if it, they're not properly fit down and seated in there uh, you could, that could hamper the ink flow. Sometimes you screw out the nib and uh, feed in all in the collar. Make sure those are seated and screwed all the way in so everything is fitting. Another issue you might have when you're writing with your pen is you find it scratchy. And the way you can really tell if it's scratchy versus maybe it needs to be smooth, it's kind of rough, is if you do a few horizontal lines. So if you go one direction, oh, I don't know if you can hear it, but I can feel the pain. It's very scratchy. You come back the other direction, it's actually quite smooth. What's happening there is that one tine is lower. So as it drags across the page, it's gouging on that inside edge. And when I go the other way, it's going on the rounded smooth edge. So it can be either way. So you've got one tang hanging kind of low and it's scratching. So that just means we need to bring that sucker back up. Sometimes you can do it just right here on the pen. You just, you gotta get a, you gotta get a loop. You know, I have a full microscope system, all that, but one of these little things, you pick them up, I don't know, I think under $10 online somewhere, just a little jeweler's loop, 10 times or 20 times magnification, whatever you wanna do. Um, that's enough, you can see that. And sometimes in the pen, all you gotta do is just give it a quick little pull. Um, I got lots of videos on this. I'm not gonna get in that today, but you can push one down, pull one up, make sure you do it the right way. And that's all you gotta do. Or in this case, you're really gonna have to take it all out. And then you can get in there, give it a look, uh, look under the loop and you're doing this and you're readjusting again. Uh, that's not gonna fix this one. I gotta get it, uh, you know, shaped properly first, but you can do little adjustments like that. Adjust it, take a look, a little bit more, maybe come back the other way. And then ultimately the things roll out, rolled away here, but you're going to fit it back in with the feed as well into the pen because sometimes there can be a little side pressure and throw things out of alignment, double check it with the loop. And then uh, that you should see if it's in alignment. And when you do your test again, everything should be nice and smooth. Might as well keep showing you on this nib since it's, uh, it's out as well is the tines have to have a little tiny gap or possibly just, just touching. That would be more of like an extra fine nib, but most nibs, they should be a little bit of space at the end. How you can check is if you take your nib and hold it up to a light or daylight or something like that, see how you can see that little gap. It's going to narrow as you go down, but there should be just enough in between. A, our actual physical measurement instead of there should be a little gap something you know kind of quantitative is if you have a set of feeler gauges I you know you can get brass shims as well I just have feeler gauges around the house because I use them on cars um, I use the smallest one so this is one and a half thousandth of an inch or let's just round it 0 0.04 millimeters the gap should be somewhere around that range and all I do is I feed the feeler gauge in here always through through the phone here it's impossible but you just kind of start it at the top of the breather hole there you can watch videos of me doing this slide it through and what's happening now it's getting really tight so it should just touch a little bit but it is grabbing really hard those tines are way too tight if i look under the loop there's no daylight getting through when you pull the feeler gauge out it grabs and catches. So um, again, I got videos on that, but essentially what you do, you can do it sometimes in the pen and you'll put your uh, your finger on top of the breathing hole, the whole pen is assembled and you can just put a little pressure just to open it. Um, but you know, it is better if you can take it out and you grab and you essentially just pull the shoulders apart. You can see them opening a little bit and just hold it for maybe like a five, six seconds, something like that. Check it again and just keep doing it back and forth, back and forth all these types of things the alignment the adjusting the time gap that is something you just really take your time on um it, it's it's better just to go slow and make small incremental changes instead of trying to get it all in one shot check your work as you go go slow and then you can also tune it exactly to your likings now again if if this is something you feel you shouldn't be doing and this seems like voodoo magic to you you should, you know, maybe consider getting a new nib or, you know, again, contacting the person, the place you sold it uh, to you that you bought it from, 
or you can send it off to uh, someone who does nib work and all that type of stuff as well. But again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on how to do the adjustment because I got lots of videos on that. Another thing a pen can do is when you write with it, sometimes with light pressure, it can be kind of, you almost draw strokes down this pen that isn't doing it but um, they, they seem to be dry, kind of skippy, but then if you put more pressure, then you're like, oh, now I'm getting some flow. And you're like, I shouldn't have to press that hard with a pen. You should be able to do just super light strokes and it writes like this one does. And of course, when you put pressure on it, it opens up. What that can be uh, indicative of is something called baby's bottom. Sorry about the wiggle. What in the world is baby's bottom? This is fountain pens. What are we talking about? So this is just a close-up of the nib of the tipping material. I'm using this uh, because it's it's a broad nib, so you can see more tipping material. So if we look head on, right? So if we're looking this way at it, you got your round ball and you got your slit that's here. Okay. But what can happen, because these get polished and, and tuned up in that, what can happen is that slit, especially at the very bottom can do this right so you get essentially butt crack okay that's what they call it baby's bottom you have like a little little butt and you have this gap here and it's it's you're gonna the ink is up kind of here and it needs to touch the writing surface down here and there's a gap so it's not going to quite kind of do it right so you're if you do use very light pressure it's just not going to flow out of the nib and onto the paper that way if you kind of press down and sort of force it in that's the way it'll sort of get it started so in order to get rid of that uh now you kind of this is a definitely a level up fix you're going to need something like this we call these micro mesh pads you can buy them individually or in a pack um, there are some fairly coarser ones. I think the first one is maybe around 1500, maybe even lower. I don't really use those. I use like a 4,000, a 6,000. I don't use that either, but a 4,000, uh, a 6,000, an 8,000, and 12,000 are my most common ones. Again, sort of a go slow thing. There's a, a episode back in the day of a Beavis and Butthead. I think it was the Hank Hill character hired the boys to trim his hedges. And the words of wisdom he said to them was, now boys, it's not what you cut. It's what you don't cut, right? So if you grind away a bunch of material, you can't ungrind it away. It's gone. So this is why I say this is more advanced stuff. Definitely consider sending a pen out for that. But if you feel feel like you want to give this a try, don't do this with your brand new expensive pen. Get some super cheap nibs. Um, whoops, sorry about the bouncing again there. Um, I started off with one of these, a nail buffer. I got from the good old Dollarama. And actually, this is what I used to uh, smooth out and finish off after I ground my Mont Blanc 149. I used these sides here, sort of like the, the 5, 6, and 7 there. Those sides to really finely polish and tune the nib to get it going just right. So you can do it the budget way. If, you, if your budget allows a few more dollars to spend, you can get some of these. What you essentially have to do, let me try to show you, is you need to reshape it, right? So... We, we can't have that butt there, that, you know, the butt crack, right? So we essentially have to eliminate that material that's down here, right? So we're going to have to sort of draw a new profile so it's up here more, right? Now, this is a broad nib, so this is bad to draw with. But we essentially have to remove some of this material so we reshape the ball so it's going to be up here somewhere. So essentially on the pads... Uh, you can watch some videos. You're going to be kind of taking away some of the material on the sides and we're doing it at different angles and just sort of gently removing that bit by bit. And you you start off at maybe a 4,000 or something like that and work your way up to like the 12,000. And it's a little labor of love. It doesn't take too long. But honestly, if you you can screw up a nib so quick on one of these little things if you don't know what you're doing you're doing all wrong. I see a lot of time people will do these figure eights and all this and they end up putting a flat on there and it's it's not it's not a proper job so you got to understand what you're doing first and what you got to kind of visualize what the shape needs to get shaped to and what material you're removing and go from there again if you don't think you should be doing this don't do it if you want to learn how to do it again there's lots of videos out there start cheap get 10 cheap one dollar gin how nibs or something and try on those. One of the other things you can have is everything is all good. It's all tuned up. You got ink. And when you write, it's not ink right now. It can be just, it just doesn't feel right. Now there's feedback, which I don't mind, but there's somewhere it really is just rough. It's a rough 
kind of pen and or maybe there's a little spot that's kind of pokey and jagged it might need to get polished a little bit why i'm showing this nib is not because um, there's anything wrong with it other than i cleaned it out see i didn't i didn't line that back up right i just put it back together in, in kind of haste right so that happens um, but the reason i'm showing this nib is this is a titanium nib and i wanted to match it to the titanium pen and give it the same finish in order to do that i had to heat this up with a blowtorch, I have this on video, you can watch it if you like, and then I had to dip it into acid, and it looked cool, but it just wreaked havoc on the tipping material, it was all pitted, and when I went to write with it, oh my gosh, it was terrible. So I had to smooth that out, like that was an extreme, extreme, you're not gonna see that on any other nib, but you can have some where there's maybe a sharp little edge or a sharp little corner, something like that, or just the polish wasn't quite there. Again, you can go in with the pen and do some little gentle movements and just give it a little bit of a better polish. Again, it can be a 30 second job and everything's great. Or you can screw that nib up really bad in 30 seconds and uh, you're gonna have to send it off to someone now or you really trashed it. So this stuff is like the absolute absolute last resource check everything else out first and also really question if you should be doing this at all so we went through all 13 and there's one more i just remembered as i was doing this so uh with some pens this is the pilot 912 has the fa nib yes i left the sticker on the pen just because i felt like it i got the pen i inked it i had high expectations and i was let down pretty damn quick the culprit with this one, I've only had to do it on this pen, and actually I guess on the uh, Ahab as well, but the feed just was not sufficient to keep up with how much flex this nib can do. Now I know there's a lot of debate on, well that's a Western problem thing because we're not using the pen as it's designed for Japanese characters. Uh, by the way, I'm going to be addressing that question in a video collab with someone. Keep your eyes peeled at some point in the next month or two. Hopefully we'll have that up. But what I had to do was swap out the feed. So it just, again, I have a video on that too. This was from the Flexible Nib Factory. We got rid of the stock feed and they make these ones out of ebonite and they have really improved the ink channels. This is the triple the triple slot or triple channel feed, wherever they call it. Check out their website in my video if you want details. And so you just get rid of the stock pilot one, replace that, pop it in, ink it up. And I have no challenges uh, with the ink delivery catching up and keeping up with what this super flexi nib can do. So again, that's a bit of a rare one on the Ahab. Yeah, I hack this thing to bits. You can watch a video of me doing that. I way overdid it. I have a spare uh, feed I bought to do a bit of a better job, a little more professional grade, but this thing doesn't skip anymore. So there are some again, but before you go hacking and sawing that stuff, check with the seller that you bought this from, the online provider, the in-store, whoever you got it from, um, and let, let them help you out with that first before you go start modifying stuff or purchasing aftermarket parts. One more thing I remember, just uh, as I check my notes here, I forgot to mention it, sticky converter syndrome. I was taught that name by uh, Maya Furlong from the Vancouver Pen Club. She recently got a pen, inked it up, did all of her stuff. She knows she has like, I think, eight nine hundred pens she knows how to pen man and uh it wasn't working she was having challenges with it she checked everything what ended up being the solution was there was a bum converter what can happen sometimes is ink can be attracted to it i don't know if it's like an electrostatic thing or it just has to do with surface tension and there's something going on with that particular converter in the manufacturing process or whatever it is that ink and converter combo was weird but it will sort of inhibit flow. It won't come down into the feed and you're just not getting the ink through and you'll sort of see it sticking to the edges. Now, a lot of converters have a little agitator, whether it's a ball or a spring coil type of thing in there to help promote ink flow. But every now and then you can have a converter where it just, it's, yeah, it's totally doing the opposite of what it should do. It's restricting flow instead of aiding it to get in there. So you might need to uh, swap out the converter or try cartridge to confirm you might have the old sticky converter syndrome. 
Okay, we had some bonus ones go on there. I think I remembered all the all the, the details. If you like videos like this, there's a thing down over here. It subscribes you to the channel. That would be wicked cool if you did that. Love to hear from you in the comments. If I missed something, check the description for details. Also, there's some links down there. If you're going to buy something anyways, I'd rather uh, Amazon chucks me $2 for your purchase than it coming out of your pocket and stuff like that. So, you know, if you check the links down there as well, that helps support the channel. Hope you like this video. Got some wicked reviews coming up of new pens. We'll catch you next time.